Hey, why don't you buy some better meat? The kids are growing after all. Uh, well, this kind of meat is perfectly fine for my child and me. I see. Guess your taste has adapted to that, huh? What's it called? A poor man's palate? Is that a thing? I didn't know. I forced a smile to hide my discomfort. Rosaline laughed and cut in front of me to check out. Lately, dealing with this overbearing mom friend, Rosaline has become a real pain. Every time we meet, her sharp tongue seems to get worse. What should I do? I'm Alice, a 37-year-old working in the fashion industry. I got into fashion because of my hobby in bead embroidery. This job can be done anywhere if you feel like it. Even if you leave the city and move to a rural area, as long as you have the internet, there will be no problems. I moved to the countryside with my daughter Nicola about half a year ago. Following a recommendation from a senior executive at a clothing manufacturer I had worked with, they suggested moving here for health reasons, as the water and food are great. I lost my husband in a car accident two years ago. Since then, I've been down, and Nicola started to shut herself in her room. Thankfully, my colleagues and clients were concerned and helped us a lot. To recover for their sake and Nicola's, I decided to move. This place indeed has rich nature. I started living in a house near the mountains, far from the town center, and got my first garden. I spend my days between work, watering and weeding. Currently, I'm growing tomatoes, zucchinis, baby leaves, and various herbs. Neither Nikolai nor I are extravagant with food. Our meals mainly consist of vegetables from the garden. I grew up in a not-so-wealthy family, so I'm used to a simple lifestyle. Nicola, true to being my daughter, seems content with our modest life. She made friends quickly at her new middle school. Though still healing from losing her father, she seems to be living positively. She's been smiling more and studying hard. Life in a rural town with few distractions is perfect for students. Nicola and I often laughed about how good our move has been. But there's one problem. A new friend, named Rosaline. She's 38, a year older than me, with a daughter at the same school as Nicola. I first met Rosaline in the parking lot of the largest supermarket in town. She helped me when I almost fell, carrying heavy bags. Are you okay? Be careful, the pavement here is old and uneven. Thank you so much, I'll be careful. You're not from around here, right? Your intonation is different. Yes, I've just moved here. After a brief introduction, I ended up exchanging contact details. Reliable, maybe? Rosaline is proactive and helpful. As I was still new to town, she showed me around. Must be hard without knowing the area, especially for shopping. Yes, I tend to stick to the same stores. We're only a year apart, so feel free to chat. Call me Rosaline. I'll call you Alice. Rosaline always wore at least one branded item. Rosaline was an active person, always driving her minivan everywhere. Since our daughters attended the same middle school, she became my first mom friend in this new place. Later, I was introduced to her other mom friends. Her husband works at the largest apparel manufacturer in the region. Apparently, he was a rising star, expected to become a department head someday, a fact Rosaline proudly boasted about. That's where her condescending attitude began, rooted in her husband's success. Her friendly and reliable facade hit a woman who constantly looked down on others. Rosaline's husband was famous among their circle for his good looks, often compared to some actor. Of course, Rosaline was proud of this, although she pretended it was a source of worry. When my husband goes on business trips, I worry if he's cheating. It's so distressing. 
Many avoided talking about their partners around Rosaline, fearing comparisons about looks, height, income, and job titles, and being ridiculed. As a widow, I thought I was safe from her judgement, but I was wrong. Single mother, huh? Poor Nicola. They say kids from such homes don't dream of marriage, right? Really? Is that so? Yeah, single parenting is risky. It can mess up a child's personality. Why not remarry quickly? I didn't choose to be a single mother, and I still love my late husband. Rosaline was troubling, unashamedly hurting others with her words. She was my nemesis, overwhelming for someone like me who struggles with assertive people. One afternoon, she showed up at my house unexpectedly. I had to stop my work to entertain her, unprepared with snacks. I bet if I don't serve anything, she'll gossip about it to her mom friends. I felt so gloomy. That day, I served our finest tea. Rosaline looked around my living room and commented, Small, but nice. Being alone forever must be lonely, right? Should I introduce you to a man? She went on about how single parents negatively affect children and how unhappy single parents' home are, citing sad societal examples. Both parents are always better. Do you get what I'm saying? I understand, but there are many single-parent families doing their best. In your case, Alice, you could remarry if you relied on me. Isn't not trying just lazy? I don't think it's laziness. With your lifestyle, your income must be limited, right? Aren't you worried about the future? I have thought about the future and have made preparations. The conversation then shifted to my work. When she learned I was in fashion, similar to her husband, she was delighted. If you ever need help, talk to my husband. He has influence. Thank you, that's very kind. What exactly do you do? If you have a workshop, show me. It's a bit messy right now. I create clothes according to client specifications. Sewing, huh? Sounds mundane, just like you, Alice. Rosaline continued to look down on my single-parent household. When she finally left after saying she had to prepare dinner, four hours had passed. I was more exhausted than on a regular workday, having accomplished nothing. One day while shopping, Rosaline told me about an upcoming open house at Nicola's school. Being well-connected, she always had the latest information. School open houses are important. It's also about how other kids see their mom, right? Yes, I suppose that's true. I agreed with her, which only added to my feeling of unease. The fact that I'm a single mother has spread among the mom friends through Rosaline. She surely isn't speaking positively about me, probably saying things like, I'm a naive dreamer for refusing mere marriage proposals. The thought of being judged coldly by the other mom friends made me dread attending the school open house. But I couldn't skip it, thinking it might upset Nicola. Plus, I wanted to see her in class and report back to my late husband in heaven. While I was pondering this, Rosaline started talking about what to wear on the day. Our middle school's open house is quite casual, so you can dress comfortably. Um, so casual clothes are okay? Aim for something between casual and chic. Just try not to get laughed at. Leaving me with that unsettling remark, Rosaline headed to the checkout. I never imagined such a fuss about my attire on the day of the open house. I wore gray wide leg pants, a blue shirt, and a green cardigan, with black shoes and a gray bag. Nicola gave me a decent rating when I showed her my outfit in the morning. Everything but my shoes and bag was handmade by me. This is fine, and I was quite proud of them. I headed to the school with a mix of excitement and nervousness. I managed to greet the other mom friends without a hitch and watched the class calmly. Nicola seemed to be getting along well with her classmates, which relieved me. The problem arose after the open house ended. 
As I was leaving the school with other mothers, heading to the parking lot, I noticed a small crowd. In the center, there was Rosaline, looking pleased with herself. She waved me over. In the center of the circle stood a casually dressed man. Clearly, Rosaline's husband, Rick. This is my husband, Rick. He took the day off to pick me up. Rosaline announced unasked. Then, after introducing me to the mom friends, she started commenting on my fashion. Nice outfit. It's just like I advised. Which brand? Oh, I made these clothes myself. Really? Yes, I made everything except the shoes and bag. Yeah? exclaimed mom friends. The other moms were surprised, saying it looked like store-bought. Suddenly, Rosaline's mood soured. She didn't seem to like the attention I was getting. So, it's handmade, huh? Makes sense since you can't afford to buy. Poor single mom. Rosaline started saying things that surprised even Rick. Once she starts talking, she doesn't seem to stop, attacking me one after another. One has to side hustle to get by financially, and you work for a small company, right? Um, yes. Sorry for working at a small company. Hey, Rosaline, stop it. But it's true. Alice here sews clothes, staying up late at night. Huh? Wait. Uh, Alice, you mean the fashion designer Alice? Rick suddenly seems to realize something, looking at me in shock. His voice and lips were trembling as he spoke. Alice... Are you the fashion designer, Alice? Yes, that's me. As soon as I answered, Rick immediately began apologizing profusely. The mom friends were again abuzz. I was also quite surprised. I'm so sorry, my wife was out of line. What? Rick, what are you doing? What am I doing? You should apologize too. She's the designer, Alice. Uh, what? Our brand success is all thanks to Alice. Just apologize. I somehow calmed the two of them down. Rick continued to apologize profusely. I'm really sorry. I'll come by later to apologize properly. No, really, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Alice is a famous designer? Stop talking now. Chastised, Rosaline shrank back, looking defeated. As Rick mentioned, I work as a fashion designer. I'm not sure if I contribute as much as he said, but my designs are quite popular. After that day, I was regarded with newfound respect. Weeks passed since that open house incident. Since then, Rosaline stopped acting so arrogantly among the mom friends. In fact, she and her family had suddenly disappeared from the town. I later learned that Rick had been transferred unexpectedly. Rosaline and her daughter left town to follow him. Naturally, the mom friends asked if I had something to do with it. I swore I hadn't and could only respond with, I doubt it. The story of Rosaline looking down on me for being a single mother and poor quickly spread through the town, along with Rick's apology. I think those stories probably reached the ears of the upper management at the company where Rick works. Many of them have a long-standing relationship with me, or are openly fans of my work. I guess Rosaline might have angered them. In any case, her departure made life in this town much more comfortable for me. Many mom friends, tired of her bragging and arrogance, expressed their gratitude to me. I continued to live peacefully in the town with my daughter. At the request of the mom friends, I started a sewing class. Slowly, I'm making more trustworthy friends, and it seems I'm becoming more integrated into this community. The Rosaline incident taught me a lot. Humility is important. Acting arrogantly like her can lead to downfall. Fortunately, many now praise me as an excellent designer. I never want to betray their expectations. Even if I become more famous, I plan to continue working diligently without arrogance.